And they say, how are you so successful? Well, we failed more than we have won. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell sure. you that. I mean, there have been days where like, Jesus, this again? Or God, didn't we learn from that? But every time that we have learned something and we've always improved and we've also realized what we're really good at and stuck to it. First impression is the only impression. It's the biggest impression. Yeah. Because as soon as they pull up, they don't want to see cigarette butts on the floor or grass yeah. overgrowing or a dirty door because that's already mm -hmm. set the impression in their head. As soon as they get to the room, we're going to start looking for more things. For us, we wanted to have that revitalized mom and pop feel and then be able to eventually take advantage of the redevelopment that comes in 10 or 20 years and then just trying out new trends. Welcome to The Big Break Show, your go-to podcast for real estate investing, business acquisition, mindset, and lifestyle. Now, let's dive into season two with your hosts, Rafa Loza and Dan Tollins. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Big Break Show. And today we have another special episode because we're still in uh, Dan and Cassie's hotel out here in Carolina Beach, um, as you can see, the Coastal Chronicles. And so uh, we have the operations master of all these hotels out here, does all the day-to-day -day and just the reason why these hotels run the way they run and why they're still in business. Miss Cassie Tollins, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm excited to have you here. Yeah. So, uh, Dan, you want to you wanna start off a little bit with um, how the hotel's been going? Well, I guess not Dan in this case. Usually I ask Dan because, mm -hmm. you know, but you're here today. So how about, how about we started off with you talking about how the hotel's been going here, um, this one specifically, Seabirds, and then uh, we'll get, go from there. Yeah, they're doing, it's doing really well. Um, we've been open now about three weeks. Um, bookings are improving a lot. Staff is finally getting acclimated to what they need to do and uh things are good guests are loving the remodel and uh new booking systems online check-in so it's really good yeah well, tell them a little bit about what you did for the first couple of weeks being open yes yeah, so were... the soft opening yeah. yeah so um just to kind of test the waters get things um you know, in motion, we um, offered a promo, $99 a night, get people in the door, testing things, testing to make sure everything was working how it should. Uh, beds were good. Um, just the little stuff that always comes up at the very end. So yeah. it went really good. Um, every room had a little something, but it was nice having everybody in there and they appreciated the discount. So That's cool. it was a good start for the first two weeks. Um, they really enjoyed the amenities. We added the dog run, which we are the only a motel on the island to offer a dog run. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, that's been a huge hit. In fact, we're finding other hotel guests at other hotels across the street are coming over and using that. So, um, which we are welcoming those guests because then they're going to stay with us again. Um, but it's been good. And so holiday weekend right now, you're hopefully getting your pricing in line and, yeah. and able to kind of compete with some of the other Yep. So pricing here. has gone up. We are 98% booked for the weekend um, across awesome. the board. So um, yeah, it's going to be a great weekend. Yeah, I'm excited. I, so as you guys know, I, my whole thing is operations with our units. And so I'm excited to have Cassie here today because uh, she does operations. So we're going to go deep into operations, hopefully, if that's mm -hmm. where the conversation takes us. Yeah. Uh, but something we're doing since we're live, we're going to light up some cigars. If you guys are out there watching or listening, please light up a cigar, get a drink, whatever you want. Enjoy the show. And uh, let's get into the actual talks of what do you, which way you want to go. Should we start with operations first or should we go into uh, anything specific you want to talk about? I'm open for anything. Yeah, I'd like to say... <clears throat> You know, with you you doing so much, uh, you know, really remote, and we're trying to offer, you know, kind of a, a very blend of being, you know, remote, but running things as a boutique where it's self check in, but we're actually local. So, like we ran into yesterday, we had a bit of an issue with with one of the doors uh, or one of the locks. So maybe we can talk a little bit about how the the learning curve that we're having um, versus some of the things that he's doing. Thank you, sir. Yeah, so something that I, I'm really excited to talk about today is because we run, we both do operations in very different ways. All of the majority of my operations is um, virtual. Right. And so we have virtual assistants. Everything's done online. Um, the majority of them are overseas. They deal with everything through text messages and phones. And I know you're very more of like people here, um, hands on. And so um, I'm, I'm excited because there's, I, I always tell everybody, oh, you have you don't have to be there, but to an extent you do. Like Dan just said right now, right? You had somebody that was locked out and you have to come and meet them. So there's always a part where you have to have somebody always around. Right. 
So you want to touch on that for a second, actually? Let, let's talk about, like, before we get into the details, and, and I want to talk about the lockout situation and how it was handled, but um, let's talk about how your operations look first. So, yeah, we have um, two local girls that handle our phone system. So they actually live on the island, so they're very familiar with restaurants, recommendations, the area, what the rooms look like, um, and our whole process for that. <clears throat> All of our cleaning team, um, they're also most – a majority of them, I'd say about 75% are also local. And then me and Dan, obviously living on the island is a huge benefit. <clears throat> and then our maintenance guy who handles all the properties, he's also within 15 minutes, a 15 minute drive. Um, so everybody is pretty much here. Um, I think it's very important though. You know, I think for each property, it's different. And I was telling Dan this, you know, for this property, especially these older ones, there've been so many guests that have been coming for years and years. Like when we bought the property, we had a lady show up and she was just bawling her eyes out and showed up and she wanted some of the benches that we had. And she was like, you know, I, I grew up swimming in that pool. That's where I learned how to swim at four years old. And she's now late sixties, I'd say. Um, but it's just an older motel. So you got a lot of older guests and those people still need hand holding or they want to see a face or the lock situation, you know, I consider that damage control, you know, they needed to see my face. I needed to reassure them and make sure they were okay. Could somebody else have probably done it? Sure. Yeah. But being that we're new, I think it's always very important for the first six months to a year that we're involved. That's also part of the brand that we're building and the experience, you know, I mean, there's plenty of folks that uh, are in different asset classes that have things in all these different markets. And there's Nothing wrong with that. That's great. And, you know, for us, we wanted to have that that revitalized mom and pop feel uh, and then be able to eventually take advantage of the redevelopment that comes in 10 or 20 years, you know, because uh, we're just not at that stage for us. You know, we're remodelers and, and revamping and and just trying out new trends. Yeah. And I think it's also important to touch on that it depends on the area that you're buying in is something you should research. You know, Carolina Beach is known for being a family, low-key type of island that people want to come and relax with their children. And they bring their aunts, uncles, you know, uh, grandparents. Uh, where somewhere like Myrtle Beach or maybe Tennessee is, you know, you've got a, a bunch of different people that come. You've got more 20, 30-year-olds. Yeah. So I think it's always important when you are buying these properties to really know what your clientele is and what the market is so that you know how to really staff appropriately. Yeah. It's one of the, one of the, the troubles that we had when we picked up the Bay Inn up in uh, Petoskey, Michigan was uh, it's an old school town. So a lot of people mm -hmm. are elder, uh, elder people there. Um, the cool thing is that we still like, we struggled in the beginning because nobody was really used to self check-in. Right. Um, and so it was like people would drive up and try to make reservations. And we probably lost a percentage of reservations where people drive up and they don't feel comfortable either clicking on a, a right. web li website link or scanning a QR code or something where they want like that. Or like we, they want somebody in the office to kind of check them in. We had a lot of people calling us and going, Hey, uh, what happened to the old lady that used to, you know, right. guide us in the return customers is like, Oh, you know what? Well, we got new owners. We've revamped the place and it took a transition for, for people to catch up to that. It's been doing great, right. but we still, have, we still needed somebody there. Luckily our, our, our head cleaner is the face of the property right now, because as you know, I run it remotely. Yeah. Right. Um, and so my operations again is, is the majority of his remote. And so with you being here, like, is there a time that, that you think you, you, you feel like you might want to transition or implement some sort of um, virtual help to kind of, release some of the load or at least having people not having to be here all the time? Is that something that you, you think you, or you're just kind of like, uh, cause I know we've talked about it. Yeah, yeah, no, I think we, we will definitely lean towards that. You know, I see that in a year, maybe two down the road, but I definitely think it's something again, as, as you know, people then figure out how the systems work and they, you know, you got your returning guests who come back, they then know how to, you know, self check in, they understand there's not an office, then we're not going to need those people. But yeah, majority of the clientele, a majority of the clientele are repeat guests. Right. You know, where the one in, in Chimney Rock, it was people that were just passing through for a night, and very seldomly would they come back. Where 
right. at the beach. These folks come back. I've always stayed in room one or room five or room 14 or whatever it is. Carolina Beach Inn has 75% returning guests. That is a huge yeah, number. Gigantic. Like that was one of our main attractions to that property when we were told and, you know, looking through the financials, 75% of the people come back every year and they book in advance. Doesn't even matter the price. I mean, they go ahead and just put their names on the books. I think for the next two years for the Carolina um, Music Festival, we're already booked out. Wow. Same guest, same room, same families. Yeah. So um, and I that's, think that's the important. One, that's the one that's in near the downtown area. Yeah. Yeah. About 10. That's where you stayed last time. Okay. Yep. Oh, it is. That's the one where I stayed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That place was awesome. Um, yeah. So that place is what? Two minute walking distance to the downtown area. Yep. Right across um, the street from the boardwalk. Yeah, right across the street. Yep. Free parking out front. Um, it's a great location. It's really probably one of the best locations on the island. Well, why don't you talk a little bit about how um, what software system that we're using and why we made that change and uh, the way that you're able to currently communicate with all of the staff, which is a little bit annoying for all of the staff, and we're maybe looking at doing something a little bit different. Yeah, I think every system, you know, has its pros and cons, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, everything's good. We loved Little Hotelier. That was what who we were with first. Um, they were really user-friendly, easy. Um, especially just in pricing or moving guests and stuff. Um, but the problem was that they um, you couldn't add on more properties. So each account, if you wanted to add on, you know, another hotel, then you had to set up a whole another account and log in to that one. So, you know, having multiple, it just didn't work. So we ended up switching over to cloud beds. Bridget, um, my ma assistant manager, she has done great. She, I mean, spent months researching interviewing, I mean, countless hours on the phone, just trying to really figure out what was the best system and cloud beds ended up working for us. So we're able to see all of the properties on one channel. Um, they offer the whistle app, which helps communicate with um, your staff or even your guest. And then they also link up to the Dora program. So we pay, I think it's $1,200 a year and it controls all the locks, changes the codes. Once a guest checks out, checks in, so now, you know, our team isn't having to go in, copy, paste, mm -hmm. put it in, go in, change the code, send it, you know, out. We don't have to worry about that anymore. That's all handled through the cloud bed system. So, uh, so I think it's I want, what, I'm, what I'm picking up and I want the audience to pick up is it's you can run things in multiple different ways. What's important is the way that you set up the way the systems are handled and the operations are managed, right? Your systems mm -hmm. and, and operations and SOPs and things like that. And um, obviously, cloud beds is solving a lot of problems for you in comparison to, which is what, what my biggest thing is. It's how can I automate as much as possible to where I can take a lot of the workload off of our um, people, our team, our team members, and make it easier. Right. right. So yeah. how efficient is it now that you've switched to cloud beds in comparison to before? I know you just explained a lot of it, but like in terms of efficiency. Oh, I think it's game changing, especially I think it relieves a lot off, you know, the staff in the mornings. Yeah. So, you know, again, they're not going in and having to copy and paste everything. Yeah. You know, it's automatic as soon as somebody books, you know, through booking.com, Expedia or Airbnb, whatever, you know, channel you're on, yep. you know, they'll get an automatic email. They get automatic text message with the information, you know, day of check in automatic text messages are sent out with check in times, you know, more information about the property. And again, gives those door codes for people to get in um, again. We always reassure people that we are still available 24-7. Yeah, so if you have an emergency, you know, we are just a phone call or, you know, someone is usually always on site to assist if they need it. Just hopefully, to give it up. hopefully a text. Yeah, we're, we're pushing more for the text. But again, it, it all depends, you know, as you're starting up a property. This is, you know, one we've just acquired. So we're, again, training those guests um, you know, to text more, to book online more. It's just, it takes a little bit of time. Yeah. But CBI runs great. I mean, we've owned that property now for two years. You know, I check in maybe once a week there now and all of our guests are now, you know, have figured it all out. It's very rare that, you know, we get a call or an issue with somebody who can't figure out how to do it. Yeah. So in signage, I would say signage is so important. I can't stress that enough. Oh, I saw somebody, uh, I posted a video the other day about you know when you're rebranding and your signage and he was at somewhere that he had sold and said hey here's the new branding of the, of the new place that the new buyer had done he said but they left up 80 percent of all his old signage and so for us like when we did seabirds here i remember it was major like when that sign showed up everything got changed out seabirds everything you know just make sure you have all of it 
spelled out and that, you know, like even like we don't do anything on the doors, but. Um, so uh, let, let me ask you a question about signage then, because like aside from obviously the main one that represents the brand of the pro- property and people know where it's at. Sometimes I get feedback where like, oh, I see too many things inside the apartment. They have like signs everywhere mm-hmm. of like, don't flush toilet paper, don't smoke, house rules. Like, right. uh, what type of signage do you do? And where's the fine line that you found is like, okay, we're not being overly like right. audited or like, we're not, you know, this is a big brother watching you type of situation. Right. Have fun, but follow and respect the rules. Like Or what, tacky. I mean, who wants correct. to see a bunch of yeah, signs everywhere 100%. or, you know, a room with just crap all over the mm-hmm. counters, you know, that, especially with these smaller, older hotels, the rooms are smaller. So you're limited on what signs you can put out. So in each room, we have one sign um, by the front door, by the light switch. We used to put them behind the doors. Nobody would read them. Nobody yeah. would think to look there. Yep. So we'd always get the call. Well, we didn't see it. So yeah. we now put them right by the light switch by the front door. Um, and it has all our basic instructions, like most commonly asked questions. Where's the ice machine? Wi-Fi, obviously, number mm-hmm. one. Yeah. Parking, no smoking, you know, certain rules, stuff like that. Um, but the other signs we incorporate, you know, most of these older hotels have the old offices. So if we haven't converted them to a lounge area for guests to use, then, you know, like, for instance, this office is now, you know, our private office and studio. Then we've got signs on the door that say, you know, checking in, here's the info, check your text message or need a reservation. Here's the website. Here's the phone yeah, number. QR code. Yeah, I think the other thing that he was also talking about with signage is like the generic sign you would get at Lowe's or Home Depot or the pool store or whatever that would be, you know, white and red or whatever. Now you can go to a, a custom sign company or order something online that has all the same, you know, warnings like the dog park. We had something custom made. And, Right. That also says, you know, enter at your own risk, no liability. And same with all the pool rules and make sure that it's, you know, yeah. just branded properly. Right. Yeah. Regardless and, of the age of the buildings. Yeah. And pool signs are, you know, um, controlled oh. by DHEC anyway. So that kind of makes that easy. But other than that, there's not a lot of signage. Yeah. I mean, it says no smoking, don't smoke. Yeah. You know, we don't need an extra reminder in the room yeah. or don't flush. You know, I, I still feel even though you would have those signs in the room, don't flush baby wipes or whatever. Yeah. Fortunately, people are still going to do it. They're going to do it regardless. We right. have a problem in one of our properties. It's like constant pipe issues, and they have to yeah. go and clean them out, and they're cleaning out all kinds right. of Dude, we had a guest a week and a half ago that they flushed cat litter down, and I'm like, what are yeah, you we doing? Went through that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, come on. Or we had um, somebody who decided to flush a whole fish down the disposal. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, so when we took it apart, there was a, a literally a whole fish in it. And we sent it to him. We were like, dude, dude yeah, actually, he paid for it. Yeah. He paid yeah. for the damages, which there's, is nice. There's times where certain guests are going to be like, okay, that's cool. I get it. Sorry. Right. I messed up. Let me take care of it. But most um, aren't going to listen. Most people, even when right. there's a sign, they don't care. Even the ones that you're like, they'll text you, hey, what's the Wi-Fi? Uh, it's on the sign. Look by the kitchen. <laughs> you know, it's right there. So signs obviously help to an extent. Right. But I agree. You don't need a, you don't need a lot of signage and you don't want a lot of stuff, you know, tacky stuff, just, cl- you know, all over the cabinets and stuff like that. People want space. Yep. They want to be able to put their phones and computers or clothes or whatever and, and you know, have it all laid out. Yeah. So aside from you obviously being the master of the operations and handling all the day-to-day stuff here, I know you design all your places too. I do. So, which you're crushing at, by the Thank way. You. Just please, I mean, for the you guys out there listening and watching, I've stated two Thank of them. You. I'm staying in one right now, and they're absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Where does that come from? Are you just like naturally born at oh, I wish. design? Because then, yeah. So, okay, so, so I grew up, my mom was an interior designer. Uh, she um, did classes, which I never, she would do custom drapes and stuff. But she really never did much with it besides our house. So our house would change every three months. Literally, I'd come home from school and the whole room would be new wallpaper, new wow. curtains. And I'm like, mom, how did you do this? Literally in one day, you know, the furniture would always be rearranged and Dan now knows, you know, to this day is like coming home. Where's this? Where's that? I can't find it. Um, But I just grew up around it and I enjoyed it. And um, I then got into staging. I, you know, staging became really popular back in, goodness, 2004, 2005, which is when I got into real estate. Um, And it was actually popular in Minnesota is really where it kicked off. Um, And agents just started finding that when they help their clients stage a home, it, it starts selling faster, uh, you know, encouraging yeah. people get rid of the the pictures of families and junk and stuff. Because, you know, a lot of people can't see past the junk and the clutter yeah. or right, you know, even new builds, they have a hard time. We've got a new build up. Nobody can see past the framing yet. 
Yeah. They want to see the walls up. They want to see the space. So um, I started staging and eventually turned that into um, a staging business, Charleston Home Staging Company, and staged for other real estate agents in Charleston. And then I got to be so busy because then we were the flipping. So we were doing 50, 60 houses a year. I was staging every single one plus the agent and working for other um, agent staging that I finally one night I was like, something's got to go. Yeah. So I stopped working for other agents and then just did ours. So she had plenty of practice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You put in the ref. I mean, I got it. Honestly, I don't, I don't like you, do, I, you know, I hire a designer for everything. Yeah. I don't design I, as much as I've seen all the units that we have in all the locations. It's like, look, I still like, I'm an artist. I know how to paint. I know color theory. I know that fun stuff. And even right. then I'm just like, nah, let's let the experts do it. And yeah, yeah so it's cool. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank no, you. Um, I have fun with it. Good. Yeah. That's important. It is. It's That's important. You got to enjoy it. You got to enjoy it. I'm ready to do a fun tacky one, a pink flamingo or something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're talking about that <laughs> earlier. So yeah, that should be fun. Yes. Um, okay. So obviously you guys are like a great dynamic duo, power couple crushing it in real estate. I want, I want to shift a little bit in terms of how, how, and I don't want him commenting on it because I talk to him all the time. Mm -hmm. um, how do you like, how's the work dynamic between, you know, couple married working together um you handle one aspect of business he handles another aspect of business like i want to know right. how that looks and like how that came about and how you guys work at it yeah we've been doing it now working together for since the day we met yeah literally like we met in property management and then you know dan started asset preservation and then doing the flips so yeah. we have literally worked together every day i think the biggest thing i could tell people is just stay in your lane you know, things go and flow really, really good. And this goes for any, any relationship, any partnership that you yeah. have. It's like, you know, we're all good at something. And Dan is super good in creative, like creative side of like doing design. So we'd go in and buy, you know, do a flip and he'd be like, I'm going to change this wall or do this or that. I couldn't see it. Yeah. But I could see well, color and d decor. Yeah. Okay. So you mean designed by like floor plan and like structural right. stuff. Structural okay, stuff. Yeah. I yeah. couldn't see it. Even our house that we just bought now, we're remodeling. He's like, I'm going to take out this, that, and that. And I'm like, just do it and call me back, you know, back over and I'll see, then pick out tile and stuff and floor colors and stuff. Um, and he's really, really good at it. Um, but for example, like a couple of weeks ago, he, you know, pictures and door locks and all that, that's more of operation side. And Dan thought he was being helpful by setting those up. And um, he should have just stayed in his lane. <laughs> he should have <laughs> not stayed in your lane. Yeah. Like, he was. He thought he was help. You sure. know. Um, but I think that's the biggest thing. But he's a huge support. You know, he helps a ton with the boys. You know, especially right now, getting these things up and operating. Like you said, decorating them, ordering. I mean, ordering alone. I mean is exhausting, yeah. you know, between trying to track shipments down or being delivered to the wrong places mm -hmm. or lost items, lost yeah, items. Yeah. Canceled items, you know, kickbacks. It's, it's a lot. So it's nice. You know, Dan is, you know, fully involved with picking the kids up, taking them to school and allowing me to get in here and get it done. And then he comes in, does his thing and, but makes time, you know, he's like, Hey, it's, it's Monday at 11. We're going to lunch together. We're going to make time and, and have our date. And then we, you know, do our date nights a lot during the weeknights. And, um, but it's important to remember those things because you can get so tied down and so busy. And, you know, for me, I'm like driven. Like once I'm going, I can't look right or left. I'm like the end goal, what's at the end, and I've got to get it done. You know, uh, uh, we talked about that briefly last night, I think, um, when we were out. And so one of the things that, is finding a balance like me and Lorena we have scheduled day nights on Friday mm -hmm. it's like don't bother me on Friday what are you doing I'm on day night on right. Friday because we find time for us alone aside from everything even though we spend all day together we want alone time away from everything together. right the um, text messages the calls yeah is, is there do you guys now I, I want to ask this because I know a lot of people out there like they're like oh hey I don't know if I should work with my I've had friends that are like how do you make it work I don't want to work with my my wife it's not mm -hmm. you know it's going to be work all day every day and we're going to burn each other out Right. Um, or it's going to be, uh, we're going to get in a fight over work and then, you know, you can't split the work when you come home because it's like, you're already pissed off at each other. It's not the deal. Okay. Do you, how do you guys work that out? I'm curious as to like how you guys, you, I know we, you told me last night that you, you guys talk about work all the time and it's mm -hmm. fun and enjoyable and that's great. So maybe that's how you, you handle it. I don't know. I want to hear your aspect on that. I think, you know, the hotel business too, though, hotel stuff is seasonal. So we already know 
you know, spring and summer, it's going to be busy, you know, where our trips are limited. We know that we've got to crush and grind and do what we got to do. And then come fall and winter, we really step away and then just decompress, I'd say, go on trips. We do a lot of one-on-one trips, just me and Dan um, on weekends and stuff like that when the kids are in school. So I think just remembering to take time and do that. Um, but well, we're yeah. also getting ready to start Water Wednesdays, so. Yeah, here's summer, so we'll do, yeah, so Wednesday's the day that, hey, I'm not in the office or I'm not available because, you know, we're out on the boat. Um, or at the beach or yeah. at the water park. Yeah. yeah. but There's we a water park here? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, you, you left out the uh, There so, might be one somewhere else, though. I mean, look, that's hard. It really is. There's not a lot of people that can work together. Correct. There's not. Yeah. I mean, we met a couple, you know, that have been working um, together for 20 years, and they're like, it is draining. It's hard. Yeah. It takes well, a lot. Of- I think the other thing is, is like you said, having having uh, uh, boundaries, right? So you, you don't wake up and instantly start talking about work. Like you right. wake up and have family time. Or you know, getting the, the kids ready for school, or whatever that is, and then all right, get, or get your workout in, or your reading, or whatever it is that you're doing, and then you know, eight thirty, nine o'clock rolls around, or for some people that start at ten, uh, then that's really when you start, and then you have a certain time that you cut it off, whether it's three o'clock or five o'clock, or sometimes you're like, you know, like right now we're we're in that production season of getting things up and running and acquisition. We got some other things cooking that you know require. You know, we're in that grind season where we've got to really lock in and push. But know that once you get that done, then, you know, you got some mailbox money coming. You can kind of sit back and enjoy each other. But, you know, it comes in, in you know, just ebbs and flows. It comes in waves. But just knowing and, and say, hey, listen, like, we know it's going to be tough for a little while. Uh, like, one of the things we, we signed up for, uh, there's a amphitheater here. We signed up for season tickets. So. There's a ton of concerts that are coming in. Some of them, we don't know who the hell they are. And other ones, it's a, a ton of people that we're looking forward to. But We still go, regardless we if we know go. the band or not. Yeah. We still go because yeah. we're like, this is our thing. It's about having fun together. Yeah, yeah. It's, we have no kids. It's our night. And, and actually, we've ended up enjoying most of the music and had fun just, you know, dating and going to dinner usually or going for drinks after. Um, so it's been good. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, it, you know, I guess it's like... Too, from my perspective, obviously keeping the spark alive, doing fun things together that you both enjoy. But um, you both are very, like, and this is my perspective outside and from what I see now, correct me if I'm wrong here, but you both are very driven and you both have a goal in mind. And I feel like when you guys are working together towards that goal, it doesn't really freaking matter if you're talking about work 24-7 or not because right. it's a goal that you guys are driven to do. Right. You both are having fun doing it, right? Um, something that, I, like when Lorena first started working with me, um, you know, something would go about it during the day with the business and I'd get upset. And the first time I realized, crap, I can't let this get involved in our relationship. For me, it's just like, Hey, listen, you know how I am. I'm very like work, very professional about the time it's coming to work. If something happens and I get angry at work, please know it has nothing to do with our personal life. Um, I will work at being better. And me and her have found it very easy to turn off and on when it's like work and personal. Yeah. I just got lucky in that aspect. A lot of people don't get that way. Like she would, most people would have been like, screw you, don't yell at me during work or get mad at me or argue with me during work and then expect me to be okay at home. Right. But she knows, hey, this had nothing to do with our personal relationship. Yeah. It was something that either you screwed up or I screwed up or the team screwed up. And now we're all upset. But once it's done, leave it there and that's where it stays. Right. right? Yeah. yeah, I think that's something we're working through with our daughter. So, you know, she's worked with us, not we're with us. You know, now she's got it back in, in the flow. <laughs> And uh, we're all collectively figuring out that, you know, that that family life balance and versus just working all the time, being able to being able to just have her be our daughter versus our real estate agent or our designer or our accountant or all the different hats that she wears. So do you feel like there also needs to be some sort of emotional maturity, too? Right. Like she's young. She doesn't understand that. Hey, listen, there's a. I know you're going to get up because I'm, I'm sure she gets upset at you guys being the parents, right? Oh, yeah. She is the parent. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let, I'm going to hang up and call my own mom now. Thanks for being my mom for a minute. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, I, I, again, that's, you know, social maturity uh, and then also just experience in general. And, um, you know, there's just a lot of a lot of new things. A lot of it just takes time and going through the going through it. And, um, you know, fortunately, she's got a great role model, somebody to look up to and, and work through that's had all the success that is coming her way. But yeah. so we're just trying to cut a few years of frustration and 
financial uh, hardship and try to cut all that out for her so she can be on the right track. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's she's doing cool. good. She is. She's doing really good. Proud of her. So, uh, you know, uh, I mean, I, I don't like I want to keep talking about you guys is um, the way you guys balance and stuff, because I feel like that's important. But what's also important is being able to handle certain aspects of work. Like you said earlier, how you're like, stay in his lane. Mm-hmm. You know, don't don't. And you guys have done it very well where he does the acquisitions. He finds the locations. Right. Right. My, my correct on that? Gets the money. Yeah. He, he yeah, finds the money. He builds the relationships. And you come in and you just like, all right, kick rocks. Let me handle my thing. Yep. And um, and let me do this. So you guys have a very good work and personal life balance, but you have a great business balance as well, because now you have specific roles. Did you guys like, how, how did you guys figure that out to where it's like, this is what I want to do in the business. And this is what you should do in the business. Was it something you guys just talked about? Or was it like trial and error? Yeah. Trial and error. So like, we'll go, I, I was always so excited when we would <clears throat> go look at a house or go buy something. I was like, Hey, let's go walk this property and figure out what it's going to look like. And it would end up just in an argument because she couldn't see it or she wanted to do it one way. And I'm just like, it's just like beyond frustrating. Yeah. So she, I'd just like, Hey, here's the numbers. This is what it looks like. Here's where it is. This is what we're going to do. And, um, uh, you know, even on this one, we, we would walk it just, you know, it, the, all those triggers just kept coming back. It's like, my guys, it's so frustrating. So we just, you know, know that. <clears throat> Stay in your lane. Yeah, pretty it's much. Really what it really is. Cause everybody's good at better at something. Right. Yeah. I mean, we talked about that earlier last night. Everybody's, you know, we've got staff members that are really good and it's just finding those positions. Put them in the right seat. Yeah. They need to be in. Yeah, we've got a couple of people that are great team members. They're just in the wrong seat right now. Right. You know, we put a little bit too much on them, but they're really good at certain things. And we're trying to get all those dialed back in and, and then yeah. be a little bit more lean and a little bit more efficient and a little bit more profitable. So, right. But trial and error, I think, really is. I mean, I tell people, you know, and they say, How are you so successful? We failed more than we have won. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell sure. you that. I mean, there have been days where, like, Jesus, this again or not again? And it was like, God, didn't we learn from that? But every time that we have learned something and we've always improved and we've also realized what we're really good at and stuck to it. Like there's so many people I feel like, you know, out there who they're into self-storage or a bunch of businesses or real estate or they have so many things going on and it works for them, but it doesn't work for us. Yeah. You know, we've tried self-storage. We have... Um, Tried. I we tried RV long, parks. I did yeah, long you know, term rentals. I can't yeah. stand them. As yeah. you know. we've tried apartments. We tried, you know, land development. You know, new construction is something that works for us. Land development, we're we're still cutting our teeth on, and right. um, the the boutique hotel space just kind of seems to be what works for us. And and some business acquisition stuff. You know, the dumpster business has been fantastic. We were fortunate enough to get that off the ground, and now it's you know stabilized and and you know. Got some mailbox money coming our way, which is nice. Helps afford the lifestyle. And uh, that alleviates the strain and stress to have everything else always be perfect and be successful. You know what I mean? There's something that you said that I'm glad you said. And it's like everybody, when people look at you and so through social media, through the, you know, the, the eyes of like YouTube and mm-hmm. Instagram and even listening to the podcast, it's like, oh, they're successful. That overnight success that everybody thinks everybody has when they're mm-hmm. successful. And you said, you know, we failed a lot and mm-hmm. we learned a lot and we implemented a lot and we tweaked a lot based right. on those failures. Right. Right. Um, and that's key. I think the fact that you're able to learn from the mistakes and learn from the failures and figure out, Hey, that didn't work. Let's try it again, but let's try it a little bit different. different. It didn't go, that didn't work. I'm done. I'm not doing this again. Right. I'm going back to, you know, nine to five. Yeah. And nobody said, who said life is ever going to be easy. Nobody, yeah. nobody ever said that. Even the Bible doesn't say life's going to be an easy yep. road. You're going to have a lot of challenges and a mm-hmm. lot of trials and, and it's how you, I think, turn those around, yeah. you know, to make them better or improve yourself. And, you know, even I, I tell the kids that, you know, they get really upset and I'm like, you have to learn from those mistakes, you know? And just- well, I think, you know, business is a lot like sports, you know, where you come up, you need to have, you know, in sports, you need to have good teammates and a good coach and, and a uh, good work ethic and same with business. You need to have a good mentor and a good goal to shoot towards and good team to work with and you know, all that, you know, working, having a good circle. Everything like that, worth doing is hard, right? Like we hear that quote all the time. And uh, I guarantee you, like none of us here would ever want to quit. Like we know it's hard. Right. And every day we go through challenges, but we wouldn't like, there wouldn't be any other way. 
Right. I, like I wouldn't. Well, if it was I easy, then everybody would be doing. It. Correct. So. And, and and like even even if it got extremely challenging to the point where you're like pulling your hair out and you got grays everywhere, I would still prefer to be doing what I'm doing and mm-hmm. figuring it out and moving forward than saying I quit and I'm going back. Or to never work for tried it all. Never tried yeah. it all. Can you imagine going through life and being like, God, I've, you know, my mom says that when we talked, you know, it took us probably when we thought about moving to Carolina Beach for two years. You know, I went back and forth, back and forth. And I finally went to my mom and said, hey, you know, I'm super close with my mom. And I said, we're thinking about moving. She was like, what are you waiting for? Yeah. She said, if I had only done all these things I wish I had done. She goes, and now I look back and go, God, I wish I had done that. I wish I had bought that property. I wish I had gotten into that business. So what if I had failed or it didn't work out? Yeah. But now I have, you know, I live with these regrets. So for you to go do it, go. Yeah. She was like. Yeah, and then she gets to be along for the ride with us. Yeah. You know? so she's now she's like, kinda... I got a, a beach house to come stay in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, there's been a, a ton of things that I've done that have, have not been successful. And I'm like, well, I'm glad I got to try it out. At least I know it's not worth doing. Right. And I can now talk about it and be like, hey, this is my experience. Right. With certain things. Yep. So. And you just said something, too. I want to touch on about team. You know, I think team is important because we wouldn't be, and I'm sure you can say the same thing. There's no way I could do what I'm doing without my team. Yeah. So when they're, you know, people say, well, what employees? I'm like, well, they're not my employees. They're my team. Yeah. You know, I couldn't do it without the cleaners I have or Bridget or Brian or landscapers. You know, they are my team that I have built, you know, and they're a great team. Yeah. So when she says uh, she means we. we. You know what I mean? So uh for those of you that haven't picked this up, yeah, they're obviously married. So um four kids, five dogs. Yeah. Yeah. On top a of great family, else. yes. Yeah. So and businesses and the hotels and all that fun stuff. So yeah, you know, um something that I, I, I always work at is is the team building. And I, I obviously I wouldn't be able to sit here uh midday smoking a cigar, having a great conversation, recording right. a podcast, right? Right. I'm super grateful for my team, 100%. And we have our ups and we have our downs, and they upset me, and I, I'm sure I upset them. Right? Sure. I'm, I'm hounding 24 hours a day type of deal. And so, but if it wasn't for the people that helped us grow this, like we, none of us would be here. You can't go at it alone. Like you can, like going back to your operations, you can't clean the units yourself. Mm-hmm. You can't respond to messages yourself. Nope. You can't go fix door locks yourself. You can't send messages yourself. Right? right. Like it's just not going to work. You might be able to do that with one unit, mm-hmm. but it. it at that point, it's like if you ever want to scale or grow or even add to or generate more income, you have to learn how to implement teams. And it learns with you know team leading and leadership and skills and obviously being an entrepreneur and figuring solving the problems for them, um, right. you know, supporting them, um, doing all that and having them being able to help you. Because I love when my, my uh, team comes up to me and anybody on, the, on our team goes up and they go, dude, like, can you shut up for a second? Like, this is why we're doing it this way. And I'm like, oh, shit shit right. right yeah great please continue my bad let me get out of the way right sometimes we get in our own way right yeah. well positive being positive and i think being a great leader is contagious too yeah. you know when there's bad energy you know floating around between staff you know and you come in and you bring a different energy or you know like tell the girls hey look you know i know you're having a bad day but goodness you're beautiful you've got a job look where you get to work in fact go walk across the street and look at the beach yeah. and then take a minute, come back and just be like, ah, you know, and it changes the whole attitude for everybody. Yeah. Cause everybody's like, well, she's upset. Why is she upset? And then it's, you know, it's just contagious. Yeah. So you've got to be a you know, great leader, have great, a great team and just, you know, continue to build them up. Cause we all need it. Yep. We all want to, you know, know that we're doing a good job. Right. Nobody yep. wants to be like, ah, oh, yep. I'm failing, you know, I'm, I'm busting my butt. And so I think, you know, building people up and having a great team is, extremely important and, and getting to know each other on a personal level right like me mm-hmm. with all my virtual assistants they're all in the philippines and so it's hard for me to know them on a personal level so we try to talk as much as possible um it's something that we're like hey i make sure that they go out once a month and they'll have lunch together so that they can at least get to know each other and hang out sure. together you said that and, and, day, yeah, Dan. And, and build you know mm-hmm. and have that relationship yeah we're very personal with our our team and you know birthdays or making sure you know they're dealing with what they because you know, if, if home life isn't good, then it's not good at work. So you want everybody to be happy yeah. and enjoy what they do. For sure. I love what I do. Yeah. So what, what, what's next right now? Like, what do you, what do you see? I don't want to see you guys, uh, cause we're not interviewing you right now, buddy. Um, <laughs> so what, what do you see in terms of like where you go and do you want to continue doing operations? Like, do you want to continue? The, you know, I, I'm just curious. Like what, what is it yeah. that you're like, what's next? 
type of situation? I enjoy, you know, once I get these things designed and they're, everything's functioning and everything's flowing, I still, you know, like to be involved. I just don't, you know, I won't be involved a hundred percent, you yeah. know, um, I go back a little bit more of focusing on family and me and, you know, enjoying the beach life. Um, but I'm looking forward to opening, you know, maybe another two or three of these. Um, and like, you know, you, you guys mentioned, we haven't talked about it yet eventually, but we've got some other things in the works, yeah. but, um, I like what I do. I love our guests. You know, I like talking to them, seeing where they're from, you know, we're pet friendly. I, everybody knows I'm a huge dog lover with yeah. five dogs and yeah. I love coming up and Dan's like, why are you going up there? Well, they've, they're bringing their dogs and they were here <laughs> last year and I got to go say hello yeah. and I don't hold their dogs while they unpack or, you know, those are things, you know, I enjoy doing as well. Um, and that just, you know, it's just a little, a little bit of icing on top of the. But we also live in a great place. You know, we were talking with Tim the other day and he's like, you know, he came from different larger cities. Talk about we are always busy, you know, doing something based around alcohol, whether you're going to a sports game or whatever it was, or, you know, some big outing or business meeting at, at whatever chop house. And it's like, it just here, it, it kind of forces you to enjoy where you live and go, you know, to the beach or get in the boat and just spend time with your family or spend time in nature or playing sports or working on you and not really getting lost in the, the hustle. Yeah. And, and it's important what you said too, uh, uh, what you enjoy, right? Like I'm a big, I'm big on being automation and being hands off, mm -hmm. but there's certain things that I enjoy. So that are very hands on and you like me, I don't like meeting guests. Yeah. I just, I just don't. Right. <laughs> um, uh, you enjoy that. Oh, yeah. And so obviously continue to do that in the business. There's no reason to be like, oh, I need to be hands off and have everything set up and done. And then you're not enjoying. It. Right. Like, what's the point? Right. Well, I mean? I'm opposite. So she wants to come over and hang out with the people where when the people show up, I'm like, eh, I'm going this way. Yeah. I'm there like, she yes, is. He just is. said she's over yeah. here. She Talk to her. Uh -huh. Yeah. And I yeah. love it. And yeah. I, you know, I grew up, though, you know, my mom is very social, uh -huh. bubbly person. You know, everybody, everybody needs somebody nice and friendly and a smiling face in their life. Yep. And I enjoy doing that. And, you know, I always remember sometimes you, you do get that grouchy guest. Um, we probably get one or two a week. And I always remind the staff what they're grouchy about has nothing to even do with the issue itself. So if they get there and they're like, well, I don't feel like my room is clean. And you're like, well, what's not clean about it? What, what, you know, solutions can we offer and come and check on it or whatever kind of find out it has nothing to do with the clean room. They probably had a stressful drive here. Yeah. There's five kids in the car or dogs or, you know, the husband and wife are bickering and they're exhausted yeah. or, or the we husband's were, on oxygen. Yeah. Or, we were buying a house, you know, last year. Um, I got this phone call and the husband, he was like, Hey, I, you know, got your name from somebody else. I heard you buy houses. And I, it's crazy. I almost canceled this appointment. I was, I had so much going on and, um, I almost canceled it. And there was something in my head. God was like, you gotta go. So he even called me. He's like, Hey, are you coming? And I was like, yes. And so I'm coming. It was, I think Dan was out of town. I was doing carpool. And so I'll be there in 10 minutes. No worries, honey. Nicest man. And I got there and his wife answered the phone and she had this look of disgust. Oh, yeah, sorry. The door look of disgust. And she was just like, hi. And when I looked over, he was on oxygen and I knew right then he was dying. I knew immediately, like they have to sell this house because he's not, in, you know, long story short, I ended up sitting there for two hours getting to know this sweet couple. He was, he had lung cancer. He literally had weeks left. Wow. And his goal was to get the house sold, get her moved to be closer to family. And we were able to do that. And there was a couple of times she'd call me and she was really angry and mad. And I just calmed her down and just reminded her that, you know, she had a lot of support. You know, we were there and sure enough, they ended up getting there. And a week later, after he got there, I got the call from her that he had passed. And, um, but I, you know, it was just a reminder yeah. that she wasn't angry at me. Yeah. She was just scared of the unknown of, you know, not having her husband. And, um, but we were, I was able to meet a new friend and now, you know, I check on her every couple months and, um, but I always remind, you know, our staff that just remember this probably has nothing to do with the issue. It's something else. Yeah. And especially if you, are, you like when you're in this space in the hospitality space, like you're great with people. Mm -hmm. Like I know that right away. You're very easy to talk to. You're great to have a conversation with and, being able to help people just overcome some nonsense with a good conversation and, and just kind of like changing their mood. Yeah. That only strictly speaking hospitality changes the experience and 
you know, those people will always come back yeah. and they'll always want to continue talking to him. Like you said, you know, you have somebody that you made a friend now right? Uh, over something that was like out of both of your hands, right? right completely. And uh, you turned it into a positive situation yeah. where you could have just been like, screw you. Don't talk to me like that. Right. Bye, right. Which is what most people do. Everybody yeah. like you, people trigger so fast nowadays. Yes. Instantly. Right. Very. So and that's why yesterday we had the door lock issue and you're like, oh my gosh, you were here so fast. Yeah. Cause I wanted to be able to, you know, make sure yeah. that guest was okay. If they were angry or upset, you know, I guess just again, seeing a face and yeah. Hey, where are you from? Or, Oh, what's your dog's name? And yeah. what are you guys doing for dinner? And it just totally changes. But also give it a caring about the brand. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, like absolutely. we, we talked about, we looked at a, a hotel last year that the guy was asking $15 million and, and it was overpriced. And, but we said, Hey, listen, like, how do you, can you justify that price? And all your reviews are, you know, two and three star or one star. He's like, Oh, reviews don't matter. Yeah. Was like, we knew right then we were like, hmm. yeah, but we we're like, yeah. So that conversation ended and, um, you know, we bought a couple that we were able to keep the same name or the same brand because it already had good reviews or we bought, you know, two others that had just horrible. So you got to rebrand it. And as you're, you know, building the brand, not only, you know, for each particular property, but, you know, for us and our business all the way around, because we do give people a good bit of access, you know, through the social media and through the YouTubes and all that stuff. But, you know, that, that helps attract people. But when they get here, they want it to be the same experience that they're expecting. You know, they want to meet that same person that, that they think that they're coming to meet. Yeah. Yeah. Because it is important. I think it is very important if you can buy a property that has great reviews and you can buy the business name, it <clears throat> you'll continue to build that. But buying a business with bad reviews, you know, that comes with along with booking.com and all your other channels. Most of those reviews are bad. Yeah. So trying to improve that. Because once somebody sees a bad review, again, it goes back to, well, look, we're going to look for bugs because they said there were bugs. Yeah, or, it, we're going to look yeah. for the, you know, because they said the room was dirty, right? Mm -hmm. So then when they get there, they're already looking for those things. Yeah. And that also goes back to what I always tell my staff. First impression is the only impression. It's the biggest impression yeah. because as soon as they pull up, they don't want to see cigarette butts on the floor or lawn, you know, grass yeah. overgrowing or a dirty door because that's already mm -hmm. set the impression in their head. As soon as they get to the room, well, we're going to start looking for more things. So again, I, it goes back to the reviews too that you want really good reviews. Otherwise, you got to rebrand and start over. Yeah, that's a great point. D talking about uh, rebranding and starting over, do you find it easier? I was going to ask a question that you already answered. Um, I was going to say, do you find it easier to keep it the same brand, which is what we've just been talking about? But no, the point I was getting at is because I know. Oh wait, didn't you guys? Uh, you guys rebranded, didn't you? This was rebranded. Seabirds, okay, so yeah, Seabirds yeah. with the Moran. It had really bad reviews, so that's we made the decision okay. to change, which was a hard decision because the Moran had been around since you know it was built, 1950. We're the third owner ever, yeah. so you know for, to rebrand and change the color, people knew it as the green building, the Moran. So to change it was a huge risk, but it was a risk that needed to be taken because the reviews were bad. You know, the property was older um, It needed, you know, new stuff. It needed, um, new, it needed great reviews. And we knew we could do that where, you know, Hickory Falls, it had decent reviews. So we decided to keep it how it was. Carolina Beach Inn, fabulous reviews. So we kept it, you know, it's Carolina Beach Inn. Yeah, we just, you know, just, slightly revamped a, a little bit of the logo and, you know, changed some colors and stuff like that. But, you know, overall, same, yeah. same motto, same, same, right. same. So, uh, you know, I, I want your perspective on this because in my head, I feel like it's easier to rebrand and start fresh and, and grow it in your, the way you want to do it as right. opposed to, I understand prior reviews are important, but if people see and they find it refreshing, look, new look, new style, new design, new experience, new communications, the reason you, there's no reviews is because we just took over and it's brand new and we made this place better than what it was before. In my head, I'm like, let's do it. Uh, yeah. And I, and I would personally be like, I want to stay there because right. I want to see what it's about. Right. It's brand right. new. Like, let's go check it out. So as opposed to, oh, you know, it's an old place. They just took over. Yeah, great. They have a thousand five star reviews, but they just bought it. That means that all those reviews aren't theirs. Right. You get but, what I'm saying? No, I do. But then that goes back to your good, really good booking platforms and channels and stuff like that and the algorithms. Because oh, then, that's a good point. Yes. You start yes. a new channel or you start, excuse me, a new website. All of a sudden, you're below Correct. everybody else who's up top. That's a great point. So you're not going to be getting all the clicks. You're not going to be getting. And that's, you know, right now, that's what we are pushing right now is, you know, getting on as many platforms as we can to get our name and get the clicks going. 
to push us as high. Well, that's as we also can. part of the so the behind the scenes stuff. Like if you're working with somebody who does SEO, right? right? You buy, like you know what I mean. So, um, you know, there's some pros and cons to both. Right. The Facebook, the IG, all the the Yelp, all that we want, all of that, regardless of whether we keep it that way or not, we keep all that onto the new brand. Um, so you can push all the traffic. So like people have looked up Moran Motel and they can't find it, right? Because yeah. the guy canceled the website as opposed to yes, as opposed to look up Moran Motel and then it forwards you to Seabirds. Yeah, you know what I mean. So um, yeah, you know, there's pros and cons to both. That, that right. makes sense. And sure. I think that's you know definitely a con to it, but. Again, if you get with the right systems, it shouldn't take long before you go, you know, get back, built, built back up there. CBI, you know, was top. It was, you know, you just put in pet friendly on Carolina Beach. We pop up as number one. You want to tell everybody what CBI is? Sorry, Carolina Beach Inn. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another one of, the, of their places up here. So let's talk about a little bit. Let's, let's you know, let's promote the place a little bit um, before we get to our final questions here. We're getting to the top of the hour. Yep. You want to talk about all your uh, hotels and your motels and all you got here in this little area? Yep. So we have um, the new one here, Seabirds, uh, located on Curry Beach. It is uh, 20, we're 25 units, got a cottage, um, a lot of land on the side, which you've seen, which yeah. we hope to redevelop um, 10 years. And then came with a two bedroom apartment as well. Pool, great parking, which is, you know, so can sometimes be an issue in small beach town. So yeah. a lot of parking, which was really nice. Um, we've got Carolina Beach Inn. That's, everybody knows that as my baby. That was our first one. That was a a lot of sweat and tears and uh, sleepless nights, but that was uh, that's twelve rooms, four suites. Um, the rest are queen rooms. It's um, we're hoping to push it as historic. It was built in nineteen forty one, so it has a lot of history. And then we bought uh, Carolina Beach Motel, which we're going to consider that the sister to Carolina Beach Inn. And that one is twenty one units. That one we have been under renovation for two fun years, but we will be open. I think hopefully 30 to 45 days we have pushed through it. That one's going to be a great one. The location is phenomenal. And what really stands out for us is we are pet friendly, 100% pet friendly. We don't have breed or weight restriction. I just always tell people, hey, if you got an aggressive dog, leave it at home. You know, I've got a nine pound sheep and he's mean as a snake where, you know, my bulldogs lick you to death. So yeah. um, I think that's really important because there's so many people who, you know, do the breed restrictions and stuff. I think that's just unfair to... Yeah. The label, but uh, we got Hickory Falls Inn located in Chimney Rock, North Carolina. That's a 12 unit. That one's been really fun. And then Dumpster Company. And then we've got some other things. Once we get finalized, we'll be able to announce. So you guys have a ton of stuff, huh? And you still have short term rentals, don't you? Like individual short term no, rentals? No, we've we have sold all oh, of them. All yeah, of them. we thought we were done. This was just easier for us. So we um, still do the new builds. We've got, um, the townhomes we're building. We've got two single family homes that we're finishing up. We've still got two or three uh, flips that we've still wrapping up. I think after we're done with those, we are just going to, we're going to be done with the flipping. Um, and then we've got an old beach cottage that we will eventually tear down next year as well and do a uh, townhomes. We're still doing the new builds. They're fun. And um, I feel like they're easier than the flips for sure. Um, so a lot of, a lot of moving parts. Yeah. He's got a ton of stuff going on. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's all, majority of it is here it's all here now right. yeah we have one left in charleston the dumpster company um palmetto container is still in charleston um and that runs itself rick is our manager there does a fabulous job again goes back to team um having a really good team you know we can check in with him one week and great client base and that's another one we're 75 80 percent is all repeat yeah. yeah yeah really good team and customer service so uh yeah I wanted to go a lot more into operations, but this was such a good conversation. I was actually, I, I'm glad that, you know, Dan, being that he's a new co-host, we brought you on because I, you can help. I wanted to have a conversation about like what it was to work together. And yeah. um, I think a lot of people are going to get a lot of value out of that. So I appreciate you guys being open and honest and willing to share on the show. I know this is public and a lot of people get to hear it. Um, that's the point of the, that's the idea on the point of the podcast, right? To, yeah. to teach people, learn people, uh, learn people and for people to learn on ways to work because there's i mean you can learn from a million different people out there and what works for them doesn't right. work for other people right absolutely um and we've the, always said that the, the goal is to, to get everybody to learn from one person or another so i appreciate you coming on so right. being that this is the big break show season two is there a defining moment in your life that you would consider your big break that got you from old you to new you what was your big break oh goodness gracious <laughs> I would say that probably happened last year. Yeah, it was just um, remembering that, you know, 
sometimes work isn't always important and taking time for yourself. I think we've all gone through that, like between exercise and dieting, but I'm so driven. And Dan will tell you, I'll work myself 12 to 14 hours and not think twice about it. Like, oh my gosh, I put in so many office hours. I don't, couldn't tell you. But for the last like three weeks, I've been walking. I mean, I've been working so much, you know, and, you know, 25,000 steps, 27,000 steps doesn't bother me. But at the same time, my health was also, you know, me was kind of going away. Yeah. So I had to start taking time for me and remembering, you know, to get up and do my reading or my journaling or um, start running again. Or now my biggest thing is my bike. You know, I told you the other day, I love my bike, ride my bike everywhere now. And, and just remember to take time for yourself because work will always be there. Yeah. But your family won't, kids won't, your husband won't, you know, Yeah. you you need to remember to make time for, you know, those things are important. It's, it's a big deal, right? Like we, we all kind of got into that health aspect in the last couple, uh, a yeah. couple of months, actually, in the last couple of years about we can all, like you just said, we can all put our head down and get to work and forget right. about what's actually important. You can do all this work and build everything. And then at the end of it, be unhealthy, unhappy, mm-hmm. and not even be able to live through, enjoy the, you know, the benefits of the work. You right, put right. In. Yeah. And yeah, I found myself. Lady here. Remember, there was a lady here who sold a bar. She built it, mm-hmm. ran it for, I don't know, 40 years, 34 years. <laughs> Went to sell it, did an owner finance deal. She sold and then she passed away like before the first payment was made. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, that's rough, man. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up. That's a big deal. I, you know, we, we make sure you guys take care of yourselves, mm-hmm. have the time, put in the effort. Health always comes first. Family always comes first. Right. It's important to do the work and generate the revenue so you can enjoy it at a different level. Right. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's a, that's a good one. I appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. I'll have to do this again. Yeah. Did you uh, memorize question number two or should I... Uh... Hey, we're still we're still working on Dan learning the the questions. Oh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I would oh, say you're gonna get this. He asked you what your your defining moment or big break was. Yeah. Uh, the next one is what, what is the best advice you've ever received? Best advice I've ever received. Either business or personal. Mm-hmm. If it's not going to matter in five years, don't spend five minutes worrying about it. That's really good. Mm-hmm. I love that. Mm-hmm. That's a big deal. We all focus on all the BS in our lives. Right? Like, it's irrelevant. Now I tell my kids that they're like, "She hurt my feelings," or "He said this." I'm like, "You're not even gonna know who they are in five years." Yeah. Don't spend five minutes. Yeah. Don't. I always yeah. use the the high school analogy where everybody's like, you know, when you're in high school, it's like that's the only world and that's all that matters. Right. As children, obviously, as teenagers, it is important. But you think about it, like we were talking about this what two days ago. Or something. It's like, dude, I graduated 20 years ago, and I don't remember right. any of it. Right. And I, this You're is irrelevant. Nice My life with any of them. Yeah, maybe Correct. one or two. Correct. That's it. I've made three friends from high school. Yeah. And um, people like uh, the, the my life now is absolutely nothing to do with what the high school life was. Right. Mm-hmm. Same thing. So right. I use high school as an analogy because you're right. Great, great, great advice. Yeah. Nothing like don't focus on BS. Right. If it doesn't matter. Hey, it's like it's yeah. not going to matter. Yeah. Correct. It's not going to matter that the wrong water came in or who said what or it doesn't all matter. the dumb stuff Those just pisses are, you off yeah. and that upsets you that's great yep it's not gonna matter um give the listeners an actionable step that you think that they can um or that you want to share that if this if they were to stop listening right now that they can go and do um and it can be business related around the conversation operations wise uh, whatever you want it to be um we want again this is a, a teaching platform and what's an actionable step that they can take actual step as in just Act- that, yeah, anything like, like if you want to get into operations, go do this. If you want to do this, whatever you want to give, an actionable step based on your experience for them to be able to do something. Stop procrastinating and do it. I think there's just so many people. Take action. Yeah, just you have to take action. I know so many people who have great ideas, even family members who come up with these awesome ideas, and they won't act on it. Yeah. It's like, just do it. Just try it. Like we said earlier, what happens if you fail? You know, again, where are you going to be in five or 10 years? You're still going to be regretting that you never tried it. Yeah. So I just, I think it's important to, you have to take the action and you have to, to, to push and go find out how to get the loan, start Googling, start researching. And there's so many resources. I think people forget, you know, our biggest resource out there is just start Googling and it'll lead you to something else or, you know, social media is huge. It's so important. And you can find so many things off of that. I think that's that's always it's been a good trending topic, and I'm glad you brought it as a nice refresher because a, an actionable step is to take action. Right, that's fantastic. You know, action uh, uh, action of implementation or whatever I don't know how it works the word is, but you know, go and 
you learn something, go and take the action and implement, it, right? Right. Um, otherwise, you're just learning and it's going to become a back burner. You're never going to do it, right? The most successful people <laughs> in our circle, and we know a lot of the same people, are people that are taking action every day. Right. They're actually going out there and they're doing it, yeah. right? Don't go and learn from the a-holes on social media that are just making it look beautiful and fluffy and they're not doing anything. Right. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah I appreciate you. Um, so guys, you know, this is, we're in season two of the big break show. Um, we want to hear from you guys. Let us know what you guys think of the episode. Obviously this was a fantastic episode. I'm glad you yeah. came on. Thank you. Um, but like, do you guys like this? Like in person interviews, I think they're badass. Plus we get to do fun stuff like smoke cigars. The first time we did. Um, talk in person, right? Um, anybody specific, like, you know, should Dan talk more? Um, I make fun of him about that. Sometimes. Yeah. So like, <laughs> you know, it, it, we want to have fun and we want you guys to enjoy the show. That's the, that's the biggest idea, right? Um, and and so um, when when uh, we almost decided to rebrand, we decided to keep the big break show because um, we want to continue catering to our listeners. And, our, and so anything that you guys think we should be doing differently, anything you guys want to talk about, anything you guys want us to talk about, anything you guys want to learn about, any specific speakers you want, please let us know. Um, with that, Cassie, anything that you want to, where can people get a hold of you, anything you want to promote here? Um, this is the time to do it. Please let everybody yeah. let the audience know. Uh, me and Dan, we have Coastal Chronicles channel and YouTube, and I'm on Instagram and Facebook, um, STR Queen and Cassandra Tollins. I hear from you. I had fun. Thanks for coming on. This yeah. is great. I'm glad. Thank you for sharing. Thanks for talking so much. I guess I guess we got to find a, a good balance still, huh? Right. Guys, thank you. We appreciate you, and we'll leave everything in the show notes below.